I'm and I'm a misfit. And I'm Matilda and I'm a misfit too. So welcome back to the instructional video series of how to make a concrete sculpture of a pensioner sitting on a rock feeding birds from his hands. We're at a very exciting stage now which is the face and it's precisely why we have Matilda with us. Mm -hmm. So Matilda why don't you give us a bit of an intro. Yes uh, I love sculpting faces it's one of my favorite parts to sculpt. Uh, when we do a human and because it's where you can give some personality to your sculpture, play a little bit. You can give personality with a lot of things, but face is really like the expression. The, there's a lot of things that you can do. So yeah, I really enjoy it and I'm very happy to be here. Before we jump into it, I really want to revisit some of the measurements and proportions that we talked about when we we're making the head out of metal mesh. If you remember, we were aiming to have a distance from the back of the head to the front profile of the face where the lip is at 23 centimeters once all of the cement is put on. So what I've done, I've measured what we have here and we have 20 centimeters, which gives us a centimeter and a half at the front and the back. It's important to know this to know how much play we have. Similarly, from the top of the head to the chin, when we were making the head, we were aiming for a total measurement of 26 centimeters. It's impossible to measure because he's wearing a hat at the moment. But what we do know is that the head is divided into three equal parts. We have the ability to measure from the eyebrows to the chin. So if we take two thirds of the 26 centimeters, it gives us just over 17 centimeters. I measured this at about 15 and a half. So it gives us a couple of centimeters in terms of being able to add cement to the bottom of the chin. The final measurement I want to remind you guys is the distance from the side of the head to the other side of the head. We're aiming for 15 centimeters. This here is 12 centimeters. And again, we have a play of a centimeter and a half at both sides. If you look at our face, you'll also notice that the, the facial features are very narrow. That's absolutely fine. It gives us a lot of play to add the features, the cheeks, the eyes, and the expression. And it also allows us to make a narrower face if we want to make a narrower face. So we've got a lot of play with the face. The most important thing is all of the proportions, the eyebrows are in the right place, the nose, the chin, uh, and then we can work from there. And at the same time Matilda's working on the face, I'm going to be working on the hat. And after you've done the clothes, you're going to find the hat the easiest thing in the world. So before anything, I always look on internet for like picture for inspiration, for expressions. And um, so I got like a very nice picture of an old man here that's a little bit smiling because we want him to be smiling, right? Yeah, we want him to be happy. So I get a few pictures where I can get some ideas and pointers for how I'm going to go about the sculpting of the faces. So just like we showed you with the clothes, the very first thing we do is we look at the area we're working and we see if there's any corrections that need to be made to the overall shape to give us a good base to put the details on. So one of the areas we need to fix, I draw a line down the center of the, the head. This is where the jawline is. You'll see there's a big hole here, which isn't very natural. If you look at my jaw, if I sit in the same position, I don't have such an indent. So that's an area we're gonna have to build out. And also, if you look at it from the front view, the jaw is very squished in and, and narrow, which that's also something we're going to have to build out. In addition, the shape of the eyes is pushed, is squished in a lot as well. We need to build that out to create cheekbones and parts of the eye socket above where the brow is. If you take a look at the chin, the bottom jaw is, looks like it's pushed in a little bit, so we're going to have to build that out and also add a bit of a chin. In addition to that, the neck is much narrower than the normal shape of a neck, so we're going to build that out also. So I'm putting such emphasis on making these corrections first because what you'll find by applying any layer that's about 
two centimeters or thicker, uh, there's a propensity for the cement to fall off or to sag. So what we're trying to do is get a great shape to start with to avoid these problems. So when you're done doing your correction, it's very important for you to go around and check that everything is symmetrical because those are going to be your reference point when you start doing the face. So here I go in front, okay, the chin looks symmetrical, the cheekbone too. Oh, how does it look? It looks pretty symmetrical, very nice. Okay, so now that the cement is dry, I'm going to put some cement on all the face to be able to check the symmetry and have an idea of the overall of the face. And then I'm going to add the detail. I'm done with the first layer of cement that I passed everywhere on the face. I let it dry a little bit so when I smooth it, uh, I don't change the shape of it. It's hard enough so the shape say, stays the same. So guys, I just finished the, the smoothing of the face. Now it's time to add the detail. So it's very important for the stage to have your picture so you can really look to what's happening on the face. Here we can see there's wrinkles, we can see there's an indent in the middle of the front. So all this is very important to pay attention to it, to be able to like put it on his face. So first I apply fresh cement on my forehead. Then with a sharp tool, I make the mark of the wrinkles. Then with my sculpting tool, I press on the fresh cement to make the mark more deep and create the sensation of the flesh. For the eyes, I prepared in advance a ball of cement of one centimeter and a half diameter. I prepared it in advance so it doesn't lose its shape when I cut it. Then I applied a mix shake where I'm gonna put the eyes. I put the eyes on the face on the two sides and I seal it with a little bit of milkshake. Then I applied the bottom eyelid Then I add a bit of cement around the eye socket to make it look more natural and create the shape of the eyebrow. And then finally I add my top eyelid. I make sure it goes on the top of the bottom eyelid. And since he is an old man, I'm going to accentuate the bag under his eye and add a bit more skin on the top lid. and add some wrinkles around the eyes. Since our man is old, I'm gonna make him a big nose. So I add a bit more cement on the top of the nose. Then I apply the nostrils and start working the shape of the nose. After I let dry the nose a little bit, I can cut the holes inside the nostrils. Time for the mouth. So I know that the bottom lip is situated halfway between the nose and the chin. I'm going to use it as a reference point to be able to sculpt the top lip first.
Then I roll a little sausage of cement. That's gonna be my bottom lip. I put the milkshake and stick it on. And then with my sculpting tool, I start shaping the bottom lip. I can start to see his little smile appearing, but that's not all. It's by adding the cheek that I'm gonna start giving him the peaceful smile of an old man watching birds in his hands. I start by the skin connected to the nose and then I move on to the cheek. And I finish by adding the chin. When the cement is hard enough to not lose the shape of the sculpting, I can start smoothing the face of an old pensioner. For the ear, I know that it's situated behind the jawline, between the eye and the nose. I apply the milkshake and then I add some cement that I'm gonna let dry and shape later. When the cement is dry enough to not lose its shape or fall, I start shaving the shape of the ear. With the help of a picture, I start carving the inside of the ear, adding cement where it's needed. And at the end, with a brush, I smooth it. Even if our man is old, we are gonna give him some hair so you can see the process. First, we draw the line of the hair. Then we apply fresh cement. It's very important that the cement is very fresh so we can work the shape of the hair. And then with our sculpting tool, we start creating the lines that are gonna give the texture of the hair. For the hat, I start by applying a thin layer of cement at the top part of the hat. Once this layer is dry enough that I can add fresh cement without changing the shape, I add a thin strip along the top and start carving a seam all the way around. I add some extra cement where the brim joins the top of the hat to create a curve. Now that the top is dried, I can use a brush to smooth it. Before I move on to start the ribbon, I smooth the brim of the hat. Make a guideline for the height of the ribbon and then just add a very thin layer of cement. Work your way all the way around with the ribbon and smooth to finish. So Simon, we're done with the face? We are now done with the face and not only the face, but the hat and the hair. In the next video, we're going to show you how to sculpt the hands and the arms. Until then, happy sculpting. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions, just ask below. See you Bye. next time.